Hello and welcome to the Hormonal Mama podcast. Today on the show, I have me. Uh, This is my last episode of season three, and I am here to talk to you about me. So this episode is not a long one. It's a short one that I've got for you, closing out the season and telling you a little bit about what's been going on these past six months or so and why I've taken so many hiatuses. So stay tuned. I'll be right back with you. Okay, welcome back. So there's a lot to share and I don't want to take up a lot of your time. So let me kind of tell you a little bit about what's going on with me this past year. So if you remember, I premiered this season, season three of the Hormonal Mama podcast in February of 2022. And I was actually supposed to um, premiere this season in January, but things didn't go according to plan and it got a little stressful. And I had to sort of uh, take a step back, take my time and premiere a little bit late. So I premiered a few episodes in February um, and I couldn't catch up. I just could not catch up. Now, something you may or may not know about me is that I'm a mom of three-year-old twins. um, And up until just a few weeks ago, I was a stay-at-home mom of my three-year-old twins while running two businesses and a podcast. Um, It's a lot. It's a whole lot to do anyway. But when you're a stay-at-home mom and your kids are with you all day, the only time that you get to work is when they're napping or going to bed at night. And so I got a little behind with my work and I took a little little step back and I wasn't releasing episodes um, very often. I think I, I had taken a few weeks I don't even remember between those first few episodes um, and then the next batch of episodes. So that was kind of what was going on. I was working from home, stay-at-home mom, running businesses. I have a podcast and I can't catch up with anything because, well, that's kind of what happens in life when you're super busy. But then some things happened unexpectedly in March and I needed to have surgery. And because I needed to have surgery and it was going to take a few weeks to recover, I had to put the podcast on hold. I think I took seven weeks to put the podcast on hold. Now there were two things happening at the same time. I was having unexpected surgery at the beginning of April. And then at the end of April, I was having an enormous project that uh, was really gonna just take up a significant amount of every day, even when the kids weren't napping. Um, This project was actually with a company called MindBar. Um, If you listen a few episodes ago, I interviewed the CEO of MindBar. Um, It was a great episode that you should uh, listen to. Um, I'll put in the show notes what episode number it is because off the top of my head, I just don't remember. It has been very busy lately. Um, But the project with MindBar was that I was teaching three masterclasses available on the MindBar app. But... I had to record all of these masterclasses and I had to write the curriculums and I had to create the workbooks and worksheets that were going along with each module. It was a lot of work and I was just recovering from two things, being sick and having surgery. So um, that's kind of what happened in April. That's why you didn't hear from me for a few months at that part of the year. So once I got healed from my my, um, surgery, and I got over my cold and I finished my project, I got sick again. Now, I like to mention this because my children were born in 2019. And at the end of my pregnancy, I had two things going on. I was very sick with a severe cold and cough. And I was dealing with pregnancy complications like preeclampsia, intrauterine growth restriction, and some other things. So um, being sick on top of that, was rough. I had an unplanned C-section and after my C-section, I was still recovering from my cold and I was coughing a lot. The reason I mention that is because from the moment I got better from that cold when my kids were only a few weeks old until, so that was June of 2019, from June, 2019 until April of 2022, I hadn't gotten sick and neither had my kids. But Part of what's been going on over here is between the end of March, 2022, and this week, which is uh, October 7th is today, October 7th, 2022, my children and I 
and my husband have been sick. Oh gosh, what was it six times now? Seven times. Some of that included pneumonia. Not me, but my husband had pneumonia. I had a double ear infection. My daughter had an ear infection. My son had a sinus infection. That was just one instance. And then there were regular colds and then there were stomach viruses. It's been a disaster ultimately in this house. And when you're sick and you're trying to take care of two, three-year-olds and your husband's sick, can't do all the things you need to do. So that was another thing contributing to what happened this season, but that's just part of the puzzle. The big, huge monster part of the puzzle was that in the middle of June, literally the middle of June, June 15th, my husband and our kiddos and I moved. And it was a huge move for us for many reasons. Um, what I may not have shared previously was that since my children were born in 2019, my husband and I and our kiddos moved in with my parents and we lived there for three years. And it was crazy and insane and stressful. And yes, a great way to save money, but it needed to happen. And then the pandemic started and, and everything went to hell. <laughs> it's just what happened. And so we ended up in a situation where we were living at my parents' house. They were being wonderful. Oh, I don't know, landlords. I don't even think that's the right word. They were just, they were good roommates. We'll say that they were great roommates and having that opportunity helped us a lot, but we knew we needed to get out of there. So we did. And in June of this year, middle of June, we moved into our own place and it's been incredible and amazing, but it's been hard mostly because I work from home and so does my husband. I have an art studio and an office all in one room. And it is also my laundry room, by the way. And it's been a lot. If you're watching the video here, you can see behind me, I've got tons of fabric and my bath and body making supplies over here. In front of me where you can't see is my dry erase board for my office for the Hormonal Mama. Behind me is Caribbean Design Studio. Um, that may not make sense to you. So I encourage you to keep following me on Instagram as I'm going to start sharing more and more about all of this and all that I do. Um, but the point to my story was that in the middle of June, we moved and for the entire summer, I was unpacking our new house and my new office. And it was a lot of work plus getting sick five times over the course of seven weeks is a lot. And so I couldn't keep up. Ultimately, that's what I'm getting at here is I couldn't keep up with the podcast, which is why you've seen me take multiple long stretches off this season um, and why this season's a little shorter, you know, time period. It's probably my longest season, but I've only got 22 guests this season, whereas last season, I don't know, I think I had 37, maybe something like that. I had a lot. and. It just, I needed to take a break this season. So I'm ending my season a little bit early with this episode, um, but I'll be back. You'll hear from me again around January, 2023. I already have some excellent guests already recorded and I've got some excellent guests lined up and on my schedule. And I think it's going to be a great season. I think you're really going to enjoy um, the amazing people that I have coming up for you. Um, but something that I want to know from you, my audience, what do you want to hear more of? What do you want to hear less of? You know, my goal here with the Hormonal Mama podcast is to provide resources. Essentially, this is a library for you. I want you to find the type of support and help and guidance that you need in whatever it is that you're going through, whether you're going through infertility or pregnancy or postpartum. Granted, as a coach, I work with women going through infertility and pregnancy or postpartum after infertility. That's my specialty. But the podcast is focused on providing you any resources you need that I might not be able to give you. I'm a great coach, but I can't do everything. I'm not an expert in sleep training. I'm not an expert in breastfeeding. I'm not a reproductive endocrinologist. So while I know a lot about infertility and I've been there myself, I'm not an expert. That is what I hope to bring you in the Hormonal Mama podcast is other amazing professionals that are a resource for you that can offer you support or 
amazing women sharing their personal story of going through infertility and where they are now after infertility, what next steps they took after their journey ended, how did their journey end? I think it's super duper important to be able to hear from as many people as possible, but also maybe you're not looking for infertility, pregnancy, or postpartum support. Maybe you're about to reach menopause. Are you an older mom like me? Are you in perimenopause? I've got amazing guests who can help you in that period of your life hormonally or not. I've got an amazing guest coming up next next season who's an entrepreneur and she makes thigh high stockings. That is her business. But she also went through infertility. So she's got like two stories for us. How to be an entrepreneur when you're stressed out from infertility, when you're a busy mom, when you're pregnant. I have all kinds of amazing guests sharing their stories, professionally, personally, you name it. That is my goal with this podcast. But My goal is to make sure I'm creating content that works for you, that you enjoy, that you want to hear. So my ask is if you could please give me some feedback, let me know, send me an email, comment on my social media, make a post on Facebook, whatever you want to do to get in touch with me, go to my website, thehormonalmama.com, send me a message, get on my mailing list. Tell me what you want to hear more of in the Hormonal Mama podcast and what you want to hear less of so I can tailor this to your needs and not just what I think might work for you. So let's talk a little bit about what is happening now and what you can expect from me over the next few months and then once the new season um, premieres in January. So first, some things that I have been working on, what you may or may not know is that in addition to the Hormonal Mama, I have two other businesses. The first one is Caribbean Design and Wellness. And this is actually a business that I had for many years before I started the Hormonal Mama. If you didn't know, I am a licensed esthetician, licensed massage therapist, and nationally certified continuing education provider for massage therapists. Now, many years ago, I quit my day job I was a wellness center manager and massage therapist, and I quit my job and started my own business. I have a small studio space for massage and skincare um, near where I live. If you are in the Philadelphia, Pennsylvania area, I have a studio space in Conshohocken. And if you are not in this area, then that means nothing to you, and that's okay too. But if you ever do visit Philadelphia, call me up because Conshohocken is right outside of Philadelphia and that's where I see clients. So I see clients there doing massage therapy um, and aesthetics. So I offer facials, a whole variety of facials. And like I mentioned, massage therapy, which is my original career that I started in 2002. um, And I became an esthetician in 2003. These are conversations that I may have at another time, um, but just a little bit about me and what that business is all about. I have had that business on hiatus for the past four years. Um, To make a long story short, I had to take a break when I was pregnant. Um, And then after my kids were born, the pandemic started not long after and I had to continue my break and become a stay at home mom, like I talked about before. Um, And I'll tell you, I really miss my studio. I miss my clients. I miss giving people facials and giving people massages and feeling really good about the work that I do. So this month, October, 2022, I am reopening my studio space. You can schedule with me online. I will put it in the show notes. So check it out. Um, That business is www.carabdesign.com and wellness.com. And I'm super excited about it. Um, the other business you may or may not know about is Caribbean Design Studio. Now I talked before about the fabric behind me. If you're watching the video, you can see it. If you're not watching the video, then again, I sound silly, but that's okay. Um, Caribbean Design Studio is a business I started in 2010. Um, and I'm very proud of it. I taught myself how to sew when I turned 30, right after my 30th birthday, I had injured my back. I couldn't work. I couldn't see massage clients. I couldn't do my job. Um, I got around with a walker. (laughs) It was pretty rough. I had a herniated disc. Um, If it means anything to you, it was in my L5 S1 space. Um, And it was rough. And I taught myself how to sew. And I very quickly discovered uh, passion 
not just for sewing, but for fabric. That's kind of where it all really uh, lies is I am obsessed with textiles. I have, again, behind me, that's just a tiny bit of fabric. There's a little bit more here behind my microphone, um, but I have a ton of fabric, tons and tons of fabric. And I've got tons and tons of wallets that I make using all these fabrics. Primarily it's um, antique and vintage upholstery fabrics that I collect from antique shops, thrift stores, estate sales, you name it. And I just, I love fabric. I love the concept. I love how it's made. I love the textures, the colors. I like blending them. Um, I really enjoy the process of choosing fabrics that match up, especially when they are nothing alike. When it's, let's say, an antique um, upholstery fabric that maybe used to be a pillowcase cover or, um, you know, for like a throw pillow, or sometimes I find old napkins, cloth napkins or tablecloths or runners or things like that. And I like pairing them up with something really random, like a designer you know, cotton fabric that I found at Joanne Fabric or something like that. Really enjoy that. And anyway, that's, you know, me just getting passionate about something that I love that was a hobby that became a business. Um, and I'm back in business. It's been four years since I sat in front of my sewing machine and I have five sewing machines. <laughs> you can see one behind me here. Um, and I miss them. So I'm finally at a point now where that business is up and running too. That is Caribbean Design Studio. So that's www.caribbeadesignstudio.com. And you'll see more and more wallets and bags over the next few months as I get back into working. As you know, the Hormonal Mama, I've got two things going on. I've got my podcast here, which I love. I'll be taking a few months off, obviously, before I premiere season four, like I talked about before. But over the next few months, I'll be interviewing all these incredible guests that I mentioned previously, and I'm super excited about it. But the other part of the hormonal mama is the hormonal mama. And that is my coaching business. Um, I don't talk about it a lot on the podcast because for me, this podcast is really about my guests, but I think it's helpful for you to know who I am, what I, why I even have this podcast. And it's not just my life story. The other part of this business is coaching. I work with women going through infertility or, or, and this is important, who have previously gone through, in, through infertility. So women who are pregnant or postpartum after infertility, that is my specialty. If you have ever gone through any level of infertility, I myself went through 14 fertility treatments, some IVF, some IUI, some just medication, you know, it all these different things. I've underwent so many tests and procedures. I know what it's like to be in the thick of it with infertility, but I also know what it's like to be new to infertility and feel overwhelmed and wondering, do I belong here? Is this, is this my, my group of people? And the other side of it, oh my God, I belong here. <laughs> this is absolutely where I belong. I know what it's like. And so I am a coach to help you through those insane things that come along with this insane world of infertility, because I have three-year-old twins now, right? I've been doing this for three years as a parent, the same amount of time that I went through infertility. Wow. I just made that connection. It's been the exact same amount of time that I went through infertility as it has been that I've been a mom. That's pretty crazy. And even three years into my parenting journey, infertility is still a huge part of my life because it's part of you. It doesn't define you, but it's part of you. And I think it's very important to acknowledge it, accept it, recognize it, and be proud of it. So that's why I'm a coach. That is what I do. I coach women through this nonsense. I have coaching programs. I have one-on-one -on -one sessions. I have master classes available, and I have some courses in the works that'll be coming probably not until the new year, but I'm really excited about all of it. Um, so yeah, that in a nutshell, that's where I'm at. That's where I'm going over the next few months. Um, and I'm proud of it. I know it sounds like a lot. I know it probably sounds crazy to some of you like, well, this, this lady does so many things. How does she keep up? But I love it. I, I love doing all of the different things that I do. And I'm equally passionate about all of them. One thing I forgot to mention, which I've been forgetting lately, I don't know why, with Caribbean Design Studio, 
I don't just make wallets, you know, I make other things with fabric, but the other part of Caribbean Design Studio, the handmade business is bath and body products. I don't know if you can see some of my bins over here um, with ingredients and things, but I make muscle balms, lip balms, uh, perfume oils, you know, roll on perfume oils, um, bubble bar cupcakes. I don't like making bubble bars. I have my own little twist on it. Kind of like cup cupcakes basically is what they look like. I make a whole lot of things and I love it because that part of Caribbean Design Studio brings together uh, my massage therapy and esthetician careers, as well as my desire to make things. As an esthetician, I understand skin really well. That's why I make muscle balms and other products that affect the skin, but I equally understand muscles. And that's why I make things for muscles and skin at the same time. Amazing, right? I know. Anyway, um, I'm very proud of all of the things that I do because I love them all and I give them each my all, even though I do them all part-time. <laughs> and that is exactly why it gives me a full-time business and allows me to give the attention to what needs the attention on a particular day. So how do I keep my hours straight? It is not very simple, but it is pretty simple. Basically, Mondays and Fridays, I see clients every other week at my studio. Tuesday and Thursday, I do podcast interviews and coaching calls. And on Wednesdays, I sew and make bath and body products. And then whatever Monday or Friday, I'm not at the studio. I'm also sewing and making bath and body products. So yes, it's a very, a very um, organized schedule, but it works for me. And I'm very excited about it. So anyway, that's what I've been up to. And that's what I am up to. And you'll hear hopefully a lot more about it when the podcast comes back in January. So I look forward to seeing you then. I cannot wait. There's so much coming your way. It's going to be an amazing season. So enjoy your holiday season and I'll see you in a few months.